Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of uh, Mojave Patrol's Epicurean Trail, and we're going to do another whiskey review. So, uh, tonight, we have a nice bottle of Rough Rider Whiskey. How's that? This is batch number 48. Um, it is a uh, finish in bourbon and single malt casks. Uh, Bull Moose Rye Whiskey. Three Barrel. Long Island Spirits Distillery. Batting Hollow, New York. Non-chill filtered local white winter rye. Small batch. And it's 90 proof. On the back it says, uh, Bull Moose distilled from a mash of 93% local cover crop, winter rye, and 7% malted barley. Our Bull Moose, uh, Gains its complexity and finesse via our vintage three barrel aging process. And uh, according to the Surgeon General, that uh, just by holding this bottle in my hand, this will probably kill me. So, there you have it. But first, You see that label there? Bull Moose. I have a new knife. called the Pocket Samurai. It's a, a small Tonto style blade. With a pocket clip. And inscribed on the side of the blade it says in Japanese pocket samurai, which is funny because the knife's actually made in China. So uh, every month I get a box from something called Bespoke Post. And my bespoke box has different little uh, EDC or everyday carry items. Uh, this one came with a really beautiful solid brass uh, machined uh, pen and a uh, machined uh, solid brass uh, key ring. And uh, you can go in a few, uh, like a week before they mail it off, and you can change the contents. You can add to it, which it costs, or you can substitute. Um, this month I didn't substitute anything. I wanted a little knife. I wanted the little, um, pocket samurai. And I got it. Tonight's cigar of choice is a factory smoke. Uh, Maduro Torpedo. I know the lighting isn't all that great, is it? I apologize for that. But, uh, you know, when I get better lights, I'll have better lights. But right now I don't have better lights, so... I'm going to whip open the Pocket Samurai. I'm going to trim around the back of the knife, the back of the cigar. I'm going to give just a tip. Mm. That is pretty good. Get a little bit better tip on it. Mm. 
I bought this at uh, a, st a store in um, called Total Wines and More. A friend of mine turned me on to it. And that's where I got the Rough Rider. Mm. That is a very good cigar. A friend of mine was complaining that I blocked my face. Um, I apologize. You know, um, like you said, getting the lighting correct. Yeah, it's not too bright on my face, but not too dim. That's a little difficult. I'm going to try to get lights up here. Uh, we'll see what happens, you know. Anyway, Total Wines and More has a very big selection of wines. Um, has a large selection of uh, whiskeys. Um, gin, uh, tequila, vodka. It's very well uh, appointed, the store is. And a very nice humidor, very nice humidor. Um, I would uh, recommend that to anybody in California. I don't know if it's a nationwide chain. I haven't looked uh, that far into it. This is the very first time that I have been in uh, Total Wines and More. But um, I was very impressed with it. And then uh, this was yesterday we went shopping. And then today... Um, We did a little uh, holiday shopping, uh, bought some Halloween stuff. Uh, season's coming. You know, tis the season to be spooky. You know? And um, yesterday, we had the brakes fixed on the um, Volkswagen Golf. Didn't need a lot of work, fortunately. We got off for about 250 bucks. Went to a place called Tucker Tire. Been going there for decades. They've never done me wrong. Uh, fixed the brakes on the car. Had it done in like 90 minutes. But a bing, uh, car stops great. Um, all it was was the front brakes were down to the um, just ready to kiss the steel. Caught those just in time. Back brakes were fine. And uh, we take that thing and have an oil changed. Um, we go to the uh, Valvoline uh, oil change place here in Covina. Um, they do a pretty good job. Uh, I think it's a little pricey, but if you can afford to have it done and it doesn't cost a fortune, then you should have it done correctly. Been working on the Studebaker Packard. Um, going to work on it a little bit more tomorrow. Going to video it. So you get to see what's going on there. Um, so uh, let's uh, let's jump on this Rough Rider. Hmm. Hope that's fireworks. Oh, I was going to cut this, but apparently it has its own little pull tab. Look at that. Okay. So when I was in Total Wines and More, I saw this Rough Rider and it says Bash 48. Um, 
Several months ago, <clears throat> I was up at an old liquor store in Pismo, and they had uh, a bottle of Rough Rider whiskey made by the same people. A very low batch number. I, I'm going to hazard a guess it's batch one or two. Um, I'll poke a picture here somewhere. However you do it. And uh, I'll show you the bottle. And their whiskey expert. I don't know how much of an expert he was, but uh, apparently he's supposed to be an expert. Recommended I save it as a collector's bottle. So until I get more information, that's just what I'm going to do. So hopefully the Rough Rider right here does that. Uh, Vintage bottle justice. I got a special whiskey glass. Whoa. Somebody must have won a game tonight, huh? That's got a familiar smell. Let us pour a dollop. Let it warm up in my hand for a bit. I do have a uh, mug of grape Kool-Aid off just off camera over here, but uh, hmm. wow, wow! We're gonna have to be gentle with this. <coughs> yes. Ah, that's good stuff, Maynard. That's got a good hug. Wow. That gives you a good hug. Yes. Ooh. It's on the move. It's on the move. Wow. That, that hug. Yeah, I didn't know you could get a good kick out of that Yankee whiskey. So at the beginning of the Spanish-American War, Theodore Roosevelt resigned his position as Assistant Secretary to the Navy, and uh, under the uh, command of uh, Colonel Leonard Wood, he was commissioned to raise a military organization which he called the Rough Riders. And in his words, he wanted every uh, bronco buster, cattle roper, uh, wild west, uh, uh, it sounds like we got some artillery fire coming in, wild west, uh, Roper, you name it, he wanted uh, cowboys and and uh, rough uh, 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 roughnecks, you name it, rustabouts, anybody who had that western spirit, he wanted that person in the Rough Riders.
and gather them all yeah. together. Hmm. And gather them all together out on Long Island to train them. And they were all trained up. They went down to Cuba and they fought down there. Um, uh, in three notable battles, the, uh, the Battle of Las Guizimas, the, uh, the charge uh, up Kettle Hill and the sweep across to San Juan Heights. And Theodore Roosevelt was a uh, native New Yorker. He lived down on Long Island in Oyster Bay at a place called Sagamore Hill. And um, to this day, it's uh, a very revered place for people to visit. Um, and some say, and I, I tend to agree with them, that he would most likely was the best president the United States ever had. But enough history lesson. Let's get on with um, the Rough Rider. Now, Theodore Roosevelt wasn't much of really a whiskey drinker. Uh, but to say he was a teetotaler would be a lie. And just so you know, He hated the name Teddy. You didn't call uh, you didn't call him Teddy to his face. You could call him uh, T.R. You didn't call him Theodore. You could uh, call him Colonel, or you could even call him T.D. But Teddy didn't like that at all. <clears throat> even though he's uh, famously known for being called Teddy Roosevelt. Theodore Roosevelt liked to be called Theodore. That was basically what he liked. Um, very rough and ready guy. Uh, uh, knew how to live rough. Uh, even though he was uh, born and raised in New York uh, in, uh, with, in a very affluent family. Um, he had absolutely no problem uh, throwing on a pair of buckskins and a revolver and uh, living for weeks out in the wilderness. So how did he get um, uh, why are teddy bears named after uh, Peter Roosevelt? Well, for better or worse, Theodore Roosevelt was an avid hunter. The majority of Theodore Roosevelt's hunting in his adult life was to provide specimens for museums nationwide. In the United States, he hunted many species to provide their, um, uh, they were taxidermied out and then presented to museums uh, all through the United States. And when he hunted in Africa, um, it was for that very reason to provide examples of those animals to museums in the United States. He was a big believer in zoos and museums. Why, you ask? Theodore Roosevelt believed that the farther people got from animals, the less they care. Now, in the modern age, you can pick up your telephone, uh, your tablet, your your PC, your laptop, your television, whatever, and you can see all kinds of great films and videos of animals in the wild. There's people who do nothing but travel the globe to chronograph the activities of animals in the wild, and you see their magnificence right there in your living room. But in 1883, that did not happen. He did not go out and 
kill thousands of buffalo for their hides. That wasn't him. He did have a, a cattle ranch in the Dakotas. And from what I understand, he only shot one buffalo uh, in his life. But the point was, he felt that, that the young people of America in the day were getting farther, and this is in the 1880s, were getting farther and farther removed from what he called the strenuous life. The life of living free and open in the United States. More and more people were moving to the cities and children were being raised, never seeing a deer, never seeing a bear, never seeing a, um, uh, a mountain goat, never seeing uh, uh, any of those animals in the wild, and would never see, under any circumstances whatsoever, any animals from Africa. That would never happen. It, Prior to World War II, the majority of people in the United States rarely traveled more than 50 miles from their home. Your average American. Some less than 20. I knew people in my lifetime who moved out to the desert in 1933, the Metzgers, at Metzgers Market, and from 1933 until they passed away, had only left the town in the desert they lived in one time. And that was to go to a funeral in Los Angeles. So from 1933 till the early 90s, they lived in Chambliss along Route 66, never leaving that area. And these are people I knew personally. So, it was important for Theodore to make sure that the young people of America were exposed to the animals, even if they were taxidermy exhibits, or even if they were in a zoo, uh, so they would understand what these animals were like and grow to appreciate them. Um, because let me tell you, in those in those days, anything beyond the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic, were rarely taught in American public schools. They focused you on being literate, uh, mathematically capable, and uh, being able to write your name without, you know, sketching an X on the bottom line, right? So, Theodore Roosevelt... In, uh, in and about uh, the 1880s, went on a bear hunt in upstate New York. Um, he had uh, two white guides and one Native American guide. Well, he called, in those days, what you call an Indian guide. And they went to upstate New York on a bear hunt. <clears throat> now, by the late 1880s, 1890s, There weren't a ton of free-roaming bears left in the state of New York. There's bears there to this day, but in those days, not that many. So after being out for two or three days, and not seeing um, any bears, Theodore was ready to give up the hunt and go back to New York and um, resume his life as a politician in the New York Senate, in Albany. Well, the guide, the, the three guides were getting paid by the day, and the longer they could keep them out there, the more money they would make. So what was to be the last day of the hunt? Uh, Theodore was told by the guides that they had uh, acquired a bear for him to shoot. They knew where it was, and they would take him to it, and he could dispatch the bear. Well, they walked a few hundred yards from the camp, and much to Theodore's surprise, there was the bear. A bear cub. Tied to a tree. And Theodore Roosevelt. 
he was appalled. Rumor has it that uh, he thrashed two of the, guy, the guides on the spot. I don't know which two, but two of them were thrashed for even suggesting that he do that. And then he demanded the bear be turned loose back in the wild. Because shooting a bear tied to a tree was not Theodore Roosevelt's idea of a hunt. Well, this went, in those days, viral. Um, apparently one of the guides came back to the local town and uh, told somebody in a saloon, and that got to the newspaper in town, and then they went over the telegraph wires that Theodore Roosevelt had uh, refused to shoot a tied bear, and um, he became famous, and um, uh, a company that made toy bears uh, made little stuffed bears and called it the teddy bear, you know, and he became famous for not killing a bear tied to a tree, and therefore the teddy bear was, uh, um, the phrase teddy bear was coined. And um, at that point, the rest is history. He became president. Um, he established the Pure Food and Drug Act. He established the Social, the, uh, Social Services Act. Uh, so, uh, uh, Civil Service Act. The Civil Service Act. So if you wanted a position in the Civil Service, you actually had to take a test and qualify for it rather than pay somebody and get it. Um, he appointed more African Americans and women to political positions in his, um, his uh, regime as president than any president um, of the United States until Ronald Reagan. Um, I think Ronald Reagan appointed the second uh, greatest number of women and African Americans to uh, appointed them to positions um, uh, when he was president. So anyway, um, that's a little bit of story about Theodore Roosevelt. Um, uh, went to Sagamore Hill a lot as a child. My grandfather uh, thought he walked on water, and every year we would make a pilgrimage to Sagamore Hill um, in the fall, um, which was apple picking time. And at that time, the park department would let uh, guests who came to Sagamore Hill uh, pick as many apples as they wanted uh, off the trees and off the ground so they had to take them home. And I guess it just saved them a ton of money. They didn't have to do it. So, anyway. There you go. Uh, Rough Rider Whiskey. The Factory Smoke. And a little bit of history about Theodore Roosevelt. I'm sure some of you people are going to watch it and say, ah, BS. But you know what? His life's an open book. Um, I think of all the presidents of the United States, he was the most prolific writer. He wrote uh, more books than I can imagine. I know it was several hundred books. And um, he tried to read every day of his adult life um, at least one book consisting of 200 pages and as many newspapers as possible. So he was always up on uh, current events and uh, the latest writings of the day. He died at, uh, in his early 60s, I think he was 61, when he passed away. I think it was uh, 1919, in October of 1919. Um, uh, so you know what, uh, Theodore, this one's for you. One of the greatest uh, American heroes to have uh, ever lived. Oh. Rough Rider. I recommend it. Wouldn't be afraid to serve that to anybody I knew. 
So I want to thank you all for uh, joining the uh, Hunter Patrol Zipicurian Trail. Don't forget to click uh, like and subscribe. Hit the little bell so you get notifications. And um, hey, thanks for being here. You guys are great. Even though I don't have a ton of you, I appreciate everybody who's a subscriber. Thanks. Yes, look to Packard for the easiest handling car ever built. America's new choice in the fine car field. In television and electronics, the name Dumont is your hallmark of quality and distinction. Dumont, first with the finest in television.